Hey everybody, welcome back to Travel Dev Channel. I'm here with a good friend of mine, uh, Dalton. He's actually- How's it going, everyone? Yeah, um, he's actually from the Location Rebel um, forums where we met before, but it wasn't until about two years or three years now that we finally get to meet face to face. And I'm super glad to have him here with us today. Um, just yeah, thanks to, for coming. Yeah, um, thank you for coming. And just to preface the, the situation, um, My pleasure. This is not this is not professional advice, financial advice by any means. We're not lawyers, we're not financial analysts or anything like that. This is purely from our own experiences. So make sure you take everything with a grain of salt and do your research, be responsible with it. And the other thing is, um, yeah, we're just gonna be talking about high level things and um, yeah, just uh, sh sharing in general. We're not getting into in depth today. So yeah, so welcome to uh, the channel, Dalton. And do you want to start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Um, make it easy to warm up. Yeah, thank you for having me. So as Tim mentioned, we met in the Location Rebel Forums a few years ago, but we met face to face a few weeks ago, which is which is great. I'm glad to have made this connection. A little bit about myself is I worked in finance for a few years. I prepared fairly complex tax returns, actually dealing with a lot of foreign issues. We're not going to talk about the nitty gritty, but just some high level things. Mm -hmm. um, we're both experienced travelers. We've been to places like Mexico, Colombia, other land countries. So we'll kind of talk about that. Um, I do have experience with not just finance, but also financial marketing and writing. You can see my site in the description below, and I've been able to create sales copy, ads, email funnels, blogs, and things like that for financial firms. I've also been featured on The Motley Fool as well. Uh, so one thing I want to start off with is when you hear a travel, you think, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. I'm going to have to drop so much money on it. And in reality, it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, I'm not a savvy budget traveler guy, but I have discovered that even spending a few weeks somewhere it can be much more affordable than you think. Yeah, I completely agree with you, man. Um, I spent, I think there was one time I spent $500 in Colombia and I, I marked it out, you know, on a spreadsheet um, of everything I spent that month. And it's totally possible um, even to stay longer term if you want, not just even like a short term stay. So um, I guess that leads us to our, our first topic, which is just traveling abroad and using points and that sort of thing. Um, I know you maybe you wanted to kick this one off. I think you had some stuff for it. Yeah, that's correct. So you're exactly right about points. I mean, you can use uh, credit cards like Chase, Capital One. They all have very generous, especially the sign-on benefits if you spend a certain amount. I think Chase, it's like if you spend $4,000 in your first three, three months, months yeah. then 60,000 points, which is worth around $800. And that can go a long way, especially if you pre-plan your flights, if you travel in cheaper destinations like flights between uh, Southeast Asia countries and within other countries like Colombia, they can be as low as yeah. 50 to $100. Mm -hmm. And if you use these points, then combined with the low fares, it's free and it's very helpful as well. And then you can also earn points by spending more in certain categories like groceries, you get points multipliers, and they also have an affiliate program. So if you recommend the card and someone signs up, then you get, I think, 15,000 points a year up to a $75,000 limit. There's actually my link below. I have used this uh, card, so it's very helpful. So besides the, the credit card points, you can use other hacks like um, I mean, if you're in California, like I'm in San Diego, you can actually use the cross border express. You fly out oh, to yeah. Tijuana and it's dirt cheap if you're going to Mexico or any Latin country. Yeah. And there's, there's so many different credit cards out there that you, you can just sign it up. And then, you know, you, if you're responsible enough, you can take advantage of these points and just later, you know, switch over to something else. And it was something I did for a while when I had a, a good salary job. I just transfer. It's basically like earning free points on on travel instead of putting it towards like cash back or, um, you know, 
on other things like Amazon or whatever. You can d diverge all your, your, your resources toward just getting points to travel. And then in that way, it becomes a lot cheaper as opposed to like, oh, I need to travel. So let me just buy like a $500, $600 plane ticket to, I don't know, wherever around the world. Um, by using the points, like there's, I know with Chase, especially their portal, it's a little bit cheaper to book some of the flights through there. Yeah, it is. I mean, you'd be surprised. They have pretty good rates and with the points can be very helpful. So, I mean, just little things like that being strategic, you earn money for mm -hmm. money that you spend otherwise. And I've been kind of kicking myself in the past just because there have been times where I'm like, Hey, like I shouldn't have paid for that flight. I should have used points. I didn't even know about this. I mean, it's fairly common now, but it's still a hack nonetheless. Right. And it's pretty powerful. The next thing too is using sites like Airbnb. I have used Airbnb throughout many countries, including Spain, Mexico, Peru, Colombia, even in the United States. Mm -hmm. And there have been mixed experiences with Airbnbs, but I've met a bunch of really cool people. Yeah. They're very friendly. They want to help you. I mean, overall, it's been great. And the thing is, uh, some Airbnbs, especially in cheaper countries, like in Latin America or Southeast Asia, they can be very affordable. I'm talking like 15 and $20 a night for a really nice apartment. Yeah. yeah. I, I just spoke to a friend <clears throat> recently and she had told me there's a place you can stay in Southern Mexico. And she said $1,000 for the whole year. Um, I was kind of skeptical, but I, I want to ask her more about it. But I think that's totally possible considering how... Um, down there's life life is just super cheap elsewhere outside of the US. yeah it really is and especially uh, southern mexico like chiapas and those areas i've never been mm -hmm. but you'd be surprised what you can get with just the american dollar in some of these areas yeah so on the topics of credit cards and everything too um, a lot of people think about the the travel points but mm -hmm. the cards that you get usually they'll have restrictions like oh you need to spend it at a restaurant or you need to spend it on travel to earn those points so even if you wanted to hack a little bit further, you can use an, a separate card for, you know, just everyday purchases if you're going to get gas or groceries. So that way you can maximize every single dollar that you spend if you're really good at it. Um, otherwise, you know, I would say just get like a general credit card just to earn points while, while you're doing it. Anyway, yeah, that's smart. You know, um, yeah, so I, I think uh, there's, al there's always more to be said about travel points and everything. Did you want to say anything else before? Uh, maybe we transition um no that's about it i mean travel points in airbnb you'd, su you'd be surprised how far those can get you especially in developing countries uh you can actually meet really cool people and kind of experience more local life within airbnb not only is that cheaper i think it's more rewarding i actually had a former co-worker this was a few years ago we worked at a very conservative financial firm they actually joke about me getting kidnapped in Peru of all things. <laughs> but my buddy, this is a few years ago, he was going to Cancun just to go for a week. It was like a all in, I think it was sandals or some very mm -hmm. shishi touristy club. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Oh, Dalton, I'm afraid to leave the resort. Oh, Dalton, like why does Spanish matter? And I thought to myself, you know what, Brian, that's fun, but you're missing out. Like you're missing out on like mm -hmm. the real travel experience. Mm -hmm. and no you're not going to get kidnapped no the drug lords are going to get you as long as you're responsible and you don't do anything dumb yeah no i agree um there's a lot of misconceptions about traveling abroad and oh yeah what you just see in movies is really not the reality once you actually go there and see for yourself um mm -hmm. yeah i agree with uh what you said about meeting people and i still have some friends here that i've met around the world just staying at their airbnbs and it's great um if you don't mind, let's let's move on to the next one. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. We can talk about the uh, foreign earned income exclusion. Sound good? Yeah. Um, so just from what I know, it's it's basically there's there's two ways to prove. Okay, so in general, I understand it as um, a way to earn up to a certain limit per year, right? So I think it's one hundred seven thousand. One hundred seven. It's 000. around that. One hundred five, one hundred ten. It's index for inflation as well which is nice and your income is basically not tax so anything that you don't uh get from the money that you don't get from the government money that you don't do on get from international waters that sort of thing you get excluded from this incoming 
uh, inclusion act or and whatnot. Um, yeah, that's right. Not something I've really dealt in depth with before. Um, I'm I'm sure you have more, uh, you know, understanding of this than I do. So I love to. Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're right. I mean, with the F E I E, if you have lived uh, 330 days abroad, if you're a resident of a different country, I mean, granted there are certain tests. We can actually link some detailed mm-hmm. articles in the description below if you want to do more reading. But if you fulfill the uh, days outside the U.S. residency requirements, then you can exclude up to roughly 100, 510 thousand um, uh, dollars USD per year, and that can be really helpful. I mean, the United States is one of the only countries that taxes its citizens on a worldwide worldwide basis. So, mm-hmm. I mean, this is a really helpful thing to know. Another thing that you should be aware of with um, this rule is that you still have to pay FICA taxes. So FICA taxes, they're basically payroll taxes that are used to fund Social Security and Medicare. It comes out to about 16%, and that's referred to as self-employment tax. So if you are a freelancer, if you own your own business, then you have to pay 16% in FICA tax regardless of this, uh, this rule. Hmm. And then it's different if you're an employee, if you're an employee, then your employer will pay half of that, which is roughly seven to eight percent. So that's something to be aware of. Okay. So uh, this is is this something that you would normally have to pay in a nine to five job, like a corporate job as well? Yes. Okay. But it's just that your employer, t- you know, takes up seven or seven percent or so of it. That's why it's less if you're working for a company. Yeah, that's correct. So if you're a W two employee then your employer pays half of the it's around 15 to 16 percent your employer pays half and then you pay the other half actually if you look at your uh pay stub i mean there are too many deductions as it is (laughs) but if you look at your pay stub then you'll see social security you'll see medicare you also see amounts for for unemployment Mm -hmm. uh yeah so that's something to be aware of if you're a w-2 employee now if you're attending 1099 freelancer, anything like that, you have to pay the entire 16%. That's the self-employment tax. You can also uh, deduct half of that as an adjustment on your return. Yeah, that's I'm, that's really cool. That's something I like to explore. So um, let's say you're, you're an expat or a digital nomad. You're sitting somewhere mm-hmm. in Mexico and you're earning this freelance income from whatever source, Fiverr, Upwork. Uh, personal clients so what you're having to pay is this this fica tax that you're talking about but then you're getting all these other benefits like the the foreign earned income exclusion and um, probably a whole host of other tax benefits from kind of being your own business in a way right yeah correct okay um what other things are there that that would benefit a a person that's working from another country that you know of because I read something today about um, housing credits or tax credits. Um, there's there's a few other things that I haven't looked into as well, but I think it's under the umbrella under the umbrella of the foreign earned income exclusion. Maybe you've heard of them before. If not, you know. Yeah, I have. There are foreign tax credits. So if you pay taxes to a foreign country, then those can count against your um, taxes for the United States. Mm-hmm. And there are also things to be aware aware of with. Um, foreign investments, like earning income on foreign mutual funds or pensions. So those are some things to look at. And then some countries, they might have lower tax rates. It just kind of depends. Others like the Bahamas and Switzerland, Switzerland are kind of tax havens. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some countries, especially those in Northern Europe, they're very, they're very socialistic. They have really good benefits like universal health care, universal higher education, a lot of really great benefits, but they have super high tax rates. So mm-hmm. just some things to be aware of. And then every country has different tax rules. And just be sure to consult a CPA or a tax attorney specializing in international tax law or where you're going to have your domicile. So it's it's almost worth looking at the, the bottom line of, you know, after everything falls through the crack how much are you bringing home at the end of the day you know exactly so uh, along those lines is there a couple countries that you have in mind that would be beneficial for someone as a a digital nomad or an expatriate 
um, just to bring home more money at the end of the day. Um, I, I just picked Mexico because I love the country and um, I don't really know too much about the taxes there, but <laughs> I know Neither if I'm do I, I have to do more research. Yeah. You know, that's a great question, Tim. I'm not 100% sure, but I've heard other countries, they actually incentivize people uh, with benefits yeah. like lower taxes. I know, I think Panama, Costa Rica, Ecuador, even Thailand, if you're a retiree, then they want to have your American dollars in their country. And there are a lot of incentives for those with Social Security, pensions. I have to do more research on it, but that's why I know just off the top of my head. Yeah, I've heard something similar now that you brought it up. I think it was Chile or Argentina that they were incentivizing um, to, like software developers to come down and work in their country. And they would that's subsidize amazing. them with housing or something like that. And I think the, the bulk of living in other countries, like you have a really big um, bank account, you know, like you're able to get a house, you're able to invest in their economy. But for someone like as young as we are, we don't have that much to begin with. Um, so it's almost for us worth it to invest in like smaller uh, properties or something like that not necessarily like mm -hmm. oh here's five hundred thousand dollars so can i get citizenship in your country that's that's like the no. high the high baller route you know what yeah I mean? <laughs> we're not there yet we're not there yet <laughs> yeah yeah hey everyone thanks for watching part one if you're interested in learning about more interesting topics head over to part two and you can see some of the topics down in the description below thanks